Good day or evening, dear participants. In this first lecture of Module 2, we are going to focus on the theory pertaining to quality learning and teaching materials, LTM. My name is Arnold. I am the facilitator of this lecture, assisting Mr. Maurice Nkusi. This lecture is powered by Microsoft Copilot. Let us first introduce this lecture. In education, content is considered king, and this is a fact to ensure quality education is offered to students. Such content determines what, how, and why students learn. According to Tomlinson and Imbo, 2010, quality learning content is one of the four elements of differentiated instruction, which is an approach to teaching that responds to the diversity of students in the classroom. Quality learning materials should be relevant, accurate, current, and aligned with the curriculum standards and objectives. It should also be engaging, interactive, and differentiated to suit the diverse needs and interests of the students. Quality learning content should not only transmit information, but also foster higher-order thinking skills, such as analysis, synthesis, evaluation, and creativity. These skills are essential for 21st century students who need to be able to solve complex problems, communicate effectively, collaborate with others, and innovate in a rapidly changing world, according to Trilling and Fidel, 2009. By providing quality learning materials, academics can facilitate meaningful and deep learning experiences for their students and help them develop the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that are essential for lifelong learning. This lecture explores what makes LTM effective and engaging for students and how we can design and evaluate them using some relevant theories and frameworks. We will focus on three main theories. One, universal design for learning. Two, constructive alignment. And three, cognitive load theory. These theories will help you understand the principles and criteria of quality LTM and how we can apply them in our own practice. Learning Objectives By the end of this lecture, you should be able to 1. Explain the concept and importance of quality LTM 2. Identify and describe the three theories of UDL, CA, and CLT. Let's start with the first theory. Universal Design for Learning One theory that can inform the design and evaluation of quality learning and teaching materials, LTM, is the Universal Design for Learning, UDL framework. UDL is based on the premise that students have diverse needs, preferences, and abilities, and that LTM should be flexible and accessible to accommodate this diversity. According to UDL, LTM should provide multiple means of representation, how information is presented, multiple means of action and expression, how students demonstrate their learning, and multiple means of engagement, how students are motivated and supported. By applying these principles, LTM can foster inclusive and effective learning outcomes for all students according to CAST, 2018. Furthermore, the Universal Design for Learning, UDL, framework is an approach that aims to make LTM accessible and engaging for all students, regardless of their abilities, backgrounds, or preferences. UDL is based on the premise that students have diverse needs, preferences, and abilities, and that LTM should be flexible and adaptable to accommodate this diversity. UDL proposes three principles for designing and evaluating LTM, multiple means of representation, multiple means of action and expression, and multiple means of engagement, CAST, 2018. Multiple means of representation refer to providing students with different ways of accessing and comprehending the content. This means that LTM should offer various formats, modes, and media to present the information, such as text, audio, video, images, graphs, animations, etc. LTM should also provide students with options to customize the display and appearance of the content, such as font size, color, contrast, volume, speed, etc. LTM should also support students with different levels of prior knowledge, language proficiency, and learning styles by providing scaffolds, glossaries, examples, analogies, summaries, etc. CAST, 2018. By applying these principles, LTM can foster inclusive and effective learning outcomes for all students as they can access, process, and express the content in ways that suit their individual needs and preferences. UDL also promotes learner autonomy, self-regulation, and metacognition 
as students can make choices, set goals, and reflect on their own learning. UDL also encourages learner diversity, as students can appreciate and learn from their peers' different perspectives and experiences. UDL is therefore a powerful framework for creating quality LTM that can enhance learning for everyone. The second theory is constructive alignment, CA model. CA is an approach that aligns the intended learning outcomes, the teaching and learning activities, and the assessment tasks of a course or a module. The alignment ensures that the LTM are coherent and consistent with the learning objectives and the expected performance standards. CA also emphasizes the active involvement of students in constructing their own knowledge and skills through engaging and challenging LTM, according to Biggs and Tang, 2011. By using the CA model, academics can design LTM that are relevant, authentic, and meaningful for the students, and that motivate them to achieve the desired learning outcomes. CA also supports learner autonomy, self-regulation, and metacognition, as students can make connections between the LTM and their own goals, monitor their own progress and performance, and reflect on their own learning processes and outcomes. The third theory is the cognitive load theory, CLT. CLT is a theory that explains how students process and retain information in their working memory and long-term memory. CLT suggests that LTM should be designed to optimize the cognitive load of students, which consists of three types. One, intrinsic, related to the complexity and difficulty of the content. Two, extraneous, related to the presentation and organization of the content. Three, germane, related to the processing and integration of the content. Let us look at each type. First, intrinsic load type. It is the cognitive load that is inherent to the nature and difficulty of the content. It depends on the number and complexity of the elements that need to be learned, as well as the prior knowledge and expertise of the students. Intrinsic load cannot be eliminated or reduced, but it can be managed by breaking down the content into smaller and simpler chunks, sequencing the content from simple to complex, and scaffolding the learning process with appropriate guidance and feedback. Sweller, Van Marienboer, and Pass, 1998, identified three types of intrinsic load. One, element interactivity. Two, element number. And three, element difficulty. Let us quickly describe these elements. One, the element interactivity refers to the degree to which the elements of the content interact with each other and need to be processed simultaneously. Two, the element number refers to the number of elements that need to be learned and remembered. Third, element difficulty refers to the level of difficulty or familiarity of the elements for the students. Intrinsic load also varies according to the student's interests, goals, and motivations, as well as the relevance and meaningfulness of the content. Therefore, LTM should aim to activate the student's prior knowledge, connect the content to their own experiences and contexts, and arouse their curiosity and engagement. Intrinsic load is optimal when the content is challenging but not overwhelming for the students, and when it aligns with their learning objectives and expectations according to Van Gogh and Pass, 2008. Secondly, extraneous load type. It is the cognitive load that is caused by the way the content is presented and organized. It is not related to the inherent difficulty of the content, but rather to the design and delivery of the learning materials. Extraneous load can be reduced or eliminated by using clear, concise, and coherent language, visuals, and examples, and by avoiding unnecessary or redundant information, distractions, or confusion. LTM should aim to reduce the extraneous load of students so that they can focus their attention and cognitive resources on the essential aspects of the content. Sweller et al. 1998, proposed several instructional techniques to reduce the extraneous load, such as the worked example effect, the split attention effect, the modality effect, the redundancy effect, and the guidance fading effect. These techniques are based on providing students with appropriate scaffolds and guidance, then gradually fading them as the students become more proficient and confident. Extraneous load is influenced by the student's prior knowledge and expertise, as well as the mode and medium of instruction. 
Therefore, LTM should be adapted to the student's needs and preferences and to the characteristics and affordances of the learning environment, according to Van Gogh and Paas, 2008. One way to elaborate more on the extraneous type of cognitive load theory, CLT, is to provide some examples of how extraneous load can be reduced in different learning contexts. For instance, in a text-based learning scenario, extraneous load can be reduced by using headings, subheadings, bullet points, and summaries to organize the text and highlight the main points. In a visual-based learning scenario, extraneous load can be reduced by using labels, arrows, colors, and animations to illustrate the relationships and processes among the elements of the visual. In a problem-solving learning scenario, extraneous load can be reduced by using worked examples, hints, feedback, and prompts to guide the students through the steps and strategies of solving the problem. In each of these cases, the students can benefit from the reduced extraneous load, as they can allocate more cognitive resources to process and understand the content, and to integrate it with their prior knowledge. Thirdly, the germane load type. This type is the cognitive load that is caused by the learner's active engagement in the learning process. It is related to the construction and automation of schemas, which are the mental structures that organize and store knowledge in long-term memory. Germane load can be increased by using instructional techniques that stimulate the learner's attention, motivation, metacognition, and self-regulation. Examples of such techniques are 1. Problem solving, 2. Collaborative learning, 3. Inquiry-based learning, and 4. Feedback. Germane load is beneficial for learning, as it enhances the learner's understanding and retention of the content, and facilitates the transfer of learning to new situations. LTM should aim to increase the germane load of learners, so that they can develop the skills and strategies that are essential for lifelong learning according to Van Gogh and Paas, 2008. Thus, LTM should aim to reduce the extraneous load, manage the intrinsic load, and increase the germane load of students so that they can learn effectively and efficiently, according to Sweller, Ayers, and Kalyuga, 2011. Let us reflect now. In this lecture, we discussed the concept and importance of quality learning and teaching materials, LTM, and how to design and evaluate them using three theories. One, universal design for learning, two, constructive alignment, and three, cognitive load theory. These theories provide principles and criteria for creating LTM that are relevant, engaging, accessible, and effective for diverse students. At this stage, what questions should we start asking ourselves? What comes to my immediate thinking is, one, how can you apply the principles of UDL, CA, and CLT to design or improve your own LTM? Two, from the three theory frameworks, which ones did you use to develop learning materials for your students, if any? Based on what you learned in this lecture, what is your opinion of using such models in developing the content of your courses, and how may the UDL, CA, and CLT affect the learning experience and outcomes of your students? 3. What are some challenges or limitations of applying the theories of UDL, CA, and CLT to LTM? How can you overcome them if you identify them? Reflect on these three questions in writing using the Gibbs Reflective Cycle Guide, which will be shared with you in this module. Compile your reflection in the e-journal available within the e-learning platform in use in this self-paced online course. Share your reflections with your colleagues at work and also share them on the community of practice space, which will be shared with you. In conclusion, this lecture explored the concept and importance of quality learning and teaching materials, LTM, and how we can design and evaluate them using three relevant theories and frameworks, universal design for learning, UDL, constructive alignment, CA, and cognitive load theory, CLT. These theories provide us with principles and criteria to create LTM that are inclusive, engaging, meaningful, and effective for diverse students. By applying these theories in our practice, we can enhance our students' learning outcomes and experiences and help them develop the knowledge, skills, and attitudes essential for lifelong learning. If you have any questions or challenges, please use the discussion forum named Questions and Answers of Module 2 to ask questions and answer other participants' questions as well. Thank you for your attention.